Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today we've got some stuff to unbox, maybe not quite all this much, but we'll start with the four of them. And we'll begin with this guitar, which is part of the Gibson Original Collection. I thought I'd pick one of these things up because I always enjoy the P90 versions. And you never know what kind of wood grain you're gonna get on these things. So let's go ahead and get this one out and see if I won the wood lottery or not. I don't know about you guys, with Gibson bringing out all these new colors, like if you happen to have missed the episode I did last week where Gibson announced their exclusives collection, this is a model I think needs more colors because there's only one finish within the 50s P90 standards right now, and it's this gold finish. I'd be curious what types of finishes you would like to also see him do. Because gold top is very, very traditional looking and everything. But since it's the only one within here, maybe we could get a different finish, like a, maybe a green one, you know, bring back like what they used to do with the classics. I think Sweetwater has an exclusive finish like that. Or I guess to be more realistic, since it's an original collection, they could introduce the dark burst because 1956 is supposedly the first time that we saw a finish like this in this exact model range. In fact, scratch my earlier comments. That's the only finish I want them to add at this time. But what I'm really liking about this example is the fretboard is nice and dark. Sometimes you have to condition these brand new fretboards up until they look quite as nice as this. As far as a QC goes, looks like I see like a small little ding on the edge right there. I'd say the back actually looks pretty good when you get it in the light just like that. And I like this right here. Whenever I buy a guitar, I like it to have like a unique spec or a wood grain pattern that not everybody's has. So say your guitar does get stolen, you could easily identify it. There's two little eyes in the heel of the neck. That's actually kind of cool. I really like that one. But this one was made on the 55th day of 2021. And if if you're interested in being the next owner of it, you can check it out in my reverb shop. Or if you want to save the sales tax, I do sell directly on my website, trogliesguitarshow.com. But the sponsor of today's episode is Donner. You can check them out on their website, idonner.com or donnerdeal.com. They sell all kinds of things musically related from keyboards, drums, guitars, effects pedals, looks like even audio interfaces, stringed instruments. I mean, you could check out the website. There is a bunch of stuff there. But they've sponsored videos before. And so far, my impressions of these things is they're actually really good guitars on the budget level line. I will say that, uh, the packaging leaves a little bit to be desired. It's like they don't even need this outside box, to be honest, because they just have it inside this. But I suppose that they're just trying to give it more protection. So let's go ahead and crack this open and take a look at it. Here we go. Which model did they send me this time? Something in a gig bag. Much better than most basic gig bags though that we have seen. Because normally beginner sets, they have like a little nylon bag. I mean, this is actually pretty substantial. I mean, look at this. They even have a little bumper guard at the bottom. So if you do drop it, it can absorb some of the shock. Let's see how the zippers feel. Okay, they're all right. And inside here, ooh. I believe this is actually one of their more higher end models, wow. Oh my, interesting. So this feels incredibly well-crafted for the price point. I mean, this is how much they cost on their website. And I was expecting something that felt a little bit cheaper than this. I mean, they're made in China. They might not have like the best of the best electronics in here. But the biggest thing for me is the feeling of the neck. It's got that, you know, super gloss coat over top of it. It doesn't feel cheap and that's really scary to me. They kind of have like a eagle headstock going on. And besides maybe some wood that could have been a little bit more sanded on the inside. I mean, that's not bad. And this is a semi hollow Telecaster. I really like that bridge pickup. The neck, it's pretty muddy. But works well for solo. Middle position. It 
actually plays pretty good, but something I'm noticing is it looks like they create this top with multiple layers of wood. Like I see it's actually a sandwich. So there's like one, two, three pieces that they put together. So they probably slap the top on and then route out the rest of it. And besides the guitar and these things and the gig bag, they also give you a truss rod adjustment tool, a decent little strap and instrument cables. Once again, if you're interested in checking out a Donner product, you can visit their website. You can find the links in the description. And I also have a 15% off code to share with my followers. But okay, if you're not into budget level guitars, I've got something ultra high end to share with you guys today. So I've actually already reviewed this model before and my initial impressions of this guitar is I wasn't a fan of the aging job. But in buying this one, I was kind of curious to see, do the aging jobs actually vary between the examples? And in theory, yes, they should, but let's go ahead and check this thing out. And what it is is easily shown by the outside of the case. <laughs> One, two, three, four, and here we go. Another Gibson Hendrix SG. Okay, so yeah, they, well, no. <laughs> this one looks about the same that the way that they did the finish checking. This one is not quite as deeply checked as my last one but I just happened to get number 16, that's pretty cool. So the Hendrix SG, if you're not familiar, you can check out this full review and demo where I did, I believe both of the Hendrixes. Basically, Hendrix was not really known for using Gibsons that much, like his Flying V, of course, but he had multiple different Flying Vs. But on the Dick Cavett show, I believe it was, he famously used one of these. It was a right-handed one that he played upside down. But when I did that review and demo, I didn't realize there's actually video footage of his original ones because they're actually kept at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and sometimes they'll let people play them. So you can see them right there to compare them side by side. Now between this one and the other one that I reviewed, I would say the aging job on this one is a little bit more realistic. I mean, it definitely still has that really deep checking right here, but without being able to side by side comparison it, I guess you, we, we can't really judge on whether you like that or not, but these are some great playing SGs. They're expensive though, at 10 grand a pop, we're starting to run out of inventory of these. Despite being produced in very limited numbers, they did not necessarily sell out super quickly because, you know, they were expensive, not necessarily Hendrix's most well-known signature guitars, but you can bet your butt, you know, once these things are all sold out, that's when people will start to get more <laughs> interested in them. It's a good guitar for our test unboxing episode in this area. I'll be interested to hear you guys' thoughts and opinions on the new room here. There's a few other rooms I could potentially utilize. This is starting to feel a little bit too small, like, because my other room was really long. This is just basically like a box, but we'll see how the lighting and everything looks in here. If but you're interested in being the next owner of this one, you can also find that on my shop, either on Reverb or on my website. But to end things out today is an example of a guitar that I think you guys will be interested in learning about because we've never seen one of these things on the show. This was purchased through my new Guitar Day program. I think I had pre-ordered it beforehand, but then somebody asked if they could buy it. And they're definitely wanting this guitar, so I might have to get another one in the future to do a full review and demo. But this guy has waited long enough. I need to get this guitar sent out to him. But I am a fan of this artist, so let's give it some screen time here. So this is what they're considering an EpiLite case. We know about the ones like for the uh, the Les Paul ones, like we saw the Jared James Nichols come shipped in that, as well as some of the other artist signature guitars. I'd be like the Emily Wolf. So they've just recently released these EpiLite cases for like the Explorers and stuff. So I thought it was a great idea when they gave this guitar a case, because I was fully expecting it to not have a case. Whoa. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I was fully expecting not to like this guitar. So this is the Ghost Horse, the Brendan Small Signature Galacticon Burst, I believe they call it, something like that. You get the Galacticon logo right there. The Epiphone Mother of Pearl, that looks nice, oh wow. So when I did my Rock or Not, when this thing was like set to be released, I said I didn't like the finish. And it appears, you know, almost all these are a little bit different, but this thing, oh my, it's got like a bluish 
green appearance in person. This looks way better than photos, like surprisingly better. And yet the entire backside of the guitar is in a satin finish. And take a look at this. You even have a little bit of a, a sculpting out right here so you can kind of help you get to all the frets. Because it's not exactly an explorer shape. It's kind of like a combination of a whole bunch of things. Yeah. I just really wish they would have made like a rap tail or a stop bar tailpiece version of this as well. I mean, I get it. In all of his signature guitars, he's yet to have one that has a Floyd Rose, so I think it's great for him. Looks like we also have like coil splitting for each pickup, three-way toggle switch. There's no pick guard on this or anything. And the neck, it feels a bit chunky, but yet it's still within a 60s neck profile, in my opinion. Like it beefs up just a little bit right here as you kind of get to the heel as you normally would. The ebony fretboard, it's a bit light in my opinion. I think it would look better with a darker one, but the veneer has a beautiful movement to it. And yeah, this color looks great. I wouldn't mind seeing this color on like a regular Gibson Explorer. All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this new unboxing segment. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you in the next episode. Take care.